Today I want to show you how to make a gun game, and not just any gun game, but a gun game that has melee setbacks. So here I am, I eliminate that player, I've leveled up to the next weapon, and you can see on the top right that I also have a score of 1, and then this other player comes along and they pickaxe me, and I'm going to respawn with the previous weapon, and my score is going to go back to 0. And you can see now I'm in second. Then if I eliminate this player who's in first, we're going to be tied for a second until they respawn and their score is going to go back to zero. And I'm in the lead again. And they also got set back a weapon. So it works really well. Um, and it's not too hard. Hopefully you won't be confused by this tutorial, but I'll try to make things as simple as possible. All right, so you've got a map you really like and you want to add gun game to it. So you probably have some spawn pads for your players, but you're going to want to make sure on each spawn pad that you have these settings, um, or at least this setting, that when a player spawn, it transmits on a channel 9. There's going to be quite a few channels that we're using, so it might help to copy these channels exactly. Now we're going over to where all my mechanics are, and this might look overwhelming at first, but it's not too crazy. Each row here is a team. Um, so a lot of these devices have been just copied and pasted with a few settings altered uh, for each team. You need a whole row of these devices for each player that's going to be in your gun game. And then the first thing you need to place down is an item granter. And you're going to drop all your weapons for the gun game in this item granter, starting with your first weapon and then going all the way to your last weapon. You can do however many you want, but it helps to have them line up with score to end, which is a setting uh, here. So in the game settings, you can set when a player hits a certain score, the game ends. And this is all just keeping things simple, obviously, but um, if your weapons don't line up with that, you'd have to do some more tweaking. So place your weapons down, and then you'd want to make sure that each of these devices is linked to a different team. So team one, equipping that first item, and then cycle to the previous item when receiving from 22 cycle to the next item when receiving from channel 21. Copy and paste, team 2, and then I just go up two channels for each of these. So the previous device was uh, 22, so we went up to 24, and then from 21 to 23. And you'll see on each one of these we're going up a team, and then we're going up two channels on each of these. Once you've placed all of those item granters, then it might help to go back over here and place down a team settings device. And you don't have to worry about changing the movement, but you do need to make it that when enemy eliminated by team member, transmit on channel 12. So this device is going to send a signal every time you eliminate someone. That signal is going to trigger this attribute trigger. So you're going to place down an attribute trigger and make sure that it's checking for team 1. You can disable that sound listen to that channel 12, and if all checks are valid, I'll transmit on 21. So what this attribute trigger is doing is it's filtering out which team sent that signal on channel 12, and then relaying that information to the item grantor, which is gonna cycle to the next weapon. By default, when it cycles to the next weapon, it's gonna grant it to you. So copy that attribute trigger down for each team, and then make sure you're switching on each one, like team two, and if all checks are valid, transmit and go up to, so 23, up to 25, up to team 3, team 4, up to 27. Um, so it might help when you're copying these to like copy this one here, change the settings, copy and paste, and you know go up to every, every time. You can also uh, go uh, here and click on channel browser and see and make sure that your channels are like lined up and I use this all the time it helps a lot okay so you've got all these attribute triggers down you basically created gun game when you get an elimination it's gonna send a signal and you're gonna get another weapon but we also want to add melee setbacks and this is where things get a tiny bit more complicated bear with me I'll try to explain this the best I can so here we've got a tracker device this tracker, I'm going to change the settings to eliminated, target value 1, weapon category melee, show on HUD no, tracker completion ceremony no, reset progress when receiving from 13, 
when complete, transmit on 13. It's important that you set, when target is breached, do nothing. When you get eliminated by a melee weapon, it's going to send a signal on 13. It's also, that signal is going to reset the tracker so it can be used again. Now we go back over here, we have an attribute trigger. This is going to do the same thing as this one, basically. It's going to be listening to 13 instead of 12. All of these attribute triggers are going to be listening to channel 13 to see and filter out which team and then signal, send a signal to cycle your weapon backwards. So team one, all checks are valid, transmit on 22 and we're listening to channel 13. Going here, team two, all checks are valid, transmit on 24. So I'm going up to, up to again and we're changing the team for every single player. And each of these, uh, these two devices should line up with the item grantor in front of it. So should be the same team and should have the um, previous item should line up with this one and this one should line up with cycle to the next item hopefully that makes sense and so now when you get meleeed your weapon will go back but we also need to keep track of our score so in the my island settings you can set that when you're eliminated or sorry when you eliminate someone you get a point. So that's the easiest way to do this. You just get a point every time you eliminate someone and then you've got your score to end. But we need to make sure that we subtract points. And this is where I found that it's really complicated right now at least. Um, maybe things will change. But the way I set it up was using a player reference device. This player reference device is going to register the player when receiving from that channel for the team that when they've got set back. So you get set back, it sends a signal on 13. 13 goes to that attribute trigger. Attribute trigger um, tells which team it is and sends a signal on 22 for team one. So now this player is registered here on the reference device. And then activate when receiving from channel one. So every time you're respawning, you're sending a signal on channel nine and these attribute triggers are gonna be telling which team is respawning. So uh, it's listening to channel nine, checking for the team. And if all checks are valid, transmitting on one. Checking for team two, transmitting on two. So this is really simple, like channel, uh, team three, setting a signal on channel three, and they're all listening to nine. So that's constantly happening. Every time you respawn, it's trying to send a signal, or it's trying to activate this reference device. But this reference device is only gonna be registered when you've been melee setback. And then when it's been activated, it's going to send a signal on 500 which is also going to clear the player so it's not activated again by a regular elimination. That signal on 500 is going to go to the score manager and then here you would want to make it the score value 1, subtract, play audio no, activate when receiving from 500. Hopefully this isn't all too confusing. You might be like, well why didn't you just make it that when uh, you get set back it sends a signal to this on like channel 13. Well, right now it seems like that doesn't work. It used to work, um, this used to be a lot easier, but right now it seems like when you're eliminated your score can't be changed. So I had to find a way to make it that when you come back, you respawn, your score changes um, after you've been meleeed. So this was the best way I could find out. With each of these reference devices that you're copying and pasting for each team, you're just gonna be going and linking it to that signal from this device, so setting a signal on 24, that bottom one, and linking it here to register player from that signal, and then activating from two. So following above it, I've got these attribute triggers that are separated. Um, if all checks are valid, transmit on two, three, and each of these reference devices need to be activated by the that signal. And then uh, they can all send a signal on 500 because at this point now, when you're when you're talking to the score manager, it can tell that which player is sending that signal. Um, it's called like a player instigated signal or whatnot. And so you don't have to worry about them being separated. Now we've got, uh, if you want to add like XP rewards for when people eliminate each other, you can add the accolade device and have it award them when receiving from channel 12. I guess one other thing I should mention is I put a class designer down with a default class basically, class one, equip the first item. And I dropped the first weapon in the gun game on here. 
because I noticed when people joined while a game was in progress, they weren't getting a weapon for whatever reason. So this fixed that. And then my settings are basically, you want to put however many players you have here. Voice chat all, teams free for all, team size dynamic, uh, flexible teams, default class one, and then revert to default class at end of game. Score to end, 25. Join in progress, spawn, that's fine. Going over to settings, you can set the player's health. Infinite ammo, you probably want that on. Infinite res uh, consumables and resources can be off. Then you can make uh, max building resources zero, turn off all the building stuff, so none. You can turn off all the damage to environments, and weapon destruction, and pickaxe destruction, all that off. But you want to keep the players with their pickaxe so that we can melee each other. Down but not out, off, off. Keep items, don't allow item drop, don't allow item pickup. Respawn time, if you make this smaller, it might help, especially for like a gun game where if you have a long respawn time, you might find that you're getting like way behind all the other players. Sliding, I have that on because I think it's a really cool mechanic that makes your game more fun. You can also make it that when players eliminate each other, they get health, so I have health granted on elimination set to 100, so they fully heal when they eliminate someone. And then max equipment slots, if you set this to one, it just kind of cleans things up because you only have one weapon at a time. UI, I have changed it so that you have a uh, HUD info type score. And then scoreboard win condition is score. You can also show the eliminations and assists as tiebreakers. And the map screen display is scoreboard. Yeah, that is really all there is to it. So hopefully I didn't confuse you all with the player reference device. If you have questions, feel free to comment. But hopefully this tutorial helped you out with making melee setbacks and that way you can make your own gun games as awesome as possible. Thanks for watching and I will leave the code for this map if you want to try it out in the description.